let's talk about the default sort for arrays. So if you uh, have played around in JavaScript, you'll notice that you can create an array like this, right? And it's a list of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 99, 34, and 11. And we can create another array called sorted array. And that will be the result or the return value from calling array.sort, this method, on the array class. Um, and then we'll just console log the sorted array. Now, when we run this, you'll see something really interesting. Okay, so if we run node array.js, the result is a sorted array, but it's not sorted as we expect. <laughs> so here we're getting one and then 11 and then two, three, 34, 99. And so what actually happens is by default, the objects in the array don't always have to be the same type. So some of these could be strings, some of them could be objects, some of them could be numbers, some of them could be Boolean. And so in order to create this generic sort function, they needed some like common denominator, some lowest common denominator in order to compare each of the items in the list. And so what, um, what we do by default in JavaScript is convert all of these numbers into strings, and then we compare the Unicode point value. So right now we're converting one into a string and then comparing that with the rest of the objects and using some sorting algorithm, right? Uh, and then because 11, when you convert it to a string and compare that to two, 11 comes before two because when we're comparing the Unicode values, one is before two. So it's more like an alphabetical sort. Uh, with the string values than it is a numeric sort. And so the way we can get around this is that array.sort accepts an optional function argument. This is a compare function, sometimes called an, a comparator. Uh, and so we can pass it uh, a function that expects two arguments, A and B. Um, and A and B represent each uh, pair of items in the list that we're gonna be comparing. So the underlying algorithm to sort the items, we don't actually have to care about or know about. We just have to write a function here and pass in a function that will return um, some value that is either negative, zero, or positive. And the, the comparator, uh, so this comparator function will be used by the underlying algorithm when figuring out like which order to put things in. So in the case of numerics, the shortcut is to return A minus B, and this will give us a list of sorted numbers that is in order. So if that's all you needed, you wanted to come and check out how to sort a list of numbers, cool, you can uh, go use this. And this is really kind of like, all you have to do is pass in this compare function. You might want to pull it out and say like uh, sort or like number compare as a function that is uh, equal to this thing. Um, and then you can just like create a little helper and then pass that in when you need it, number compare. And then when you run it, it'll compare the numbers and sort them um, as integers. Now, if you wanted to get a little deeper, what I'm gonna do is re-implement sort. So I'm gonna create a new method called my sort to look at how this might be done under the hood, okay? Um, so if you wanna check that out, stick with me and we'll dive right in. So here, what I wanna do is um, so we have our number compare. Let's also show what the default compare probably looks like. So default compare is gonna be a function that takes A and B and it returns, instead of returning A minus B, so in this case, A minus B, right? Like this is gonna be, if the first number is one and the second number is two, then it's gonna be one minus two and it'll return negative one and that says put A before B. So one should appear before two. Uh, similarly, if we get 34 and then 11, right? A is gonna be 34 and 11 is gonna be B. So 34 minus 11 is 23 and 23 is greater than zero. So we're gonna swap these. Um, so that's kind of, kind of how it works. So default compare works like this. So it actually returns a.toString, something like a.toString.locale compare b.toString. And so this is kind of like what the default is. So if we pass in default compare, um, that's the same as what we saw in the very beginning, one and then 11 and then two, three, 34, 99. That's, that's useful if you are alphabetically sorting something. So that's the default compare. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is implement um, 
my sort, and I'm going to implement this as a merge sort. So merge sort is uh, an algorithm I like a lot. So the first thing we need to do is add a new method to the array prototype. So we can say like array.prototype.mySort is a new function. And this is going to take in, um, by default, it doesn't take anything, but we can accept this optional argument. I'm just going to say fn, I'm going to call it fn, to accept the function as an argument, the compare function, the comparator function. And then here, rather than calling sort, I'm going to call my sort. And my sort, by default, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll pass nothing in to begin with, um, and we'll yeah actually let's just let's just implement this without any comparator function just to talk about how my sort works. All right, so the first thing that you do with a merge function, it's usually written as two separate functions. So we'll say um, merge is our other function, and that's going to take the left and the right, um, and eventually some comparator. But what we can say is like if um, we want to like iterate over left and we want to iterate over right and compare the first uh, the first item in each array and if the left is less then we're gonna put that at the front if the right is less we'll put that at the front so we want to like say something like let's let um, we'll create instance variables for left and right and a result um, this is gonna be like the resulting array that we're gonna return Okay, so we're implementing the merge here first. Um, and we want to say like while uh, left.length is greater than zero and right.length is greater than zero. Um, we want to check. Uh, so let's de destructure left into L and um, the rest of left. And so we're sort of like splitting it up. And we can do the same thing with, uh, actually let's only do that if so if left zero, so if the first item in the left array is less than the first item in the right array, then we want to put the first element from the left array onto our result. Um, so we're gonna push L. Else, um, we want to push R. Right, so we're gonna destructure the right array and push R. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're saying like, if there's anything left in either the left array or the right array, so this, this merge function takes two arrays that are already sorted and then starts popping off the first element from each array. Uh, and if either of those two arrays have something in them, then we're, we're gonna compare the first elements in each. And if there's something in the left, then we want to, uh, we're using destructuring here to do kind of like pull off the first and the rest and save the rest. Uh, and then similar for the right, we're gonna pull off the right and save the right. Um, and we're pushing on those first elements that are the least or like the smallest. Um, and then we can concatenate, when we return the result, it's possible that like we have a left array that is completely smaller than the right array or vice versa. So after we've gone through and checked and compared those items, we wanna concatenate our result with left and uh, right. Uh, okay, so let's. So this is this is our merge function. Let's test that before we get too far. So we'll console.log uh, merge of one, two, five with uh, four, six, seven, and let's see what we get. Let's console this out. Okay. So our merge is working one, two, four, five, six, seven. So merge works. That's great. Um, okay, so now we're going to take advantage of merge. So we want to take our um, our array and we want to split that in half. And we're going to sort the left and then pass that into merge. And then we're going to sort the right and pass that into merge and sort of recursively call my sort. So let's see. So we want to get we want to get the halfway mark. So the halfway mark is going to be like the ceiling of um, the half of this length. Uh, and then the left is gonna be this dot slice zero up to half. And the right is gonna be this dot slice half. Okay, so this should give us sort of the left and right sides of the array. And what we wanna return is 
um, what do we want to return? We want to return merge. Um, so we're going to merge two arrays. And the things that we want to merge is left.mysort. So we're going to recursively call my sort and then write dot my sort. Okay, so this is the t this is the two this is the two arrays that we're going to um, that we're going to merge together. Um, okay, and then we need one other thing. We need our base case. So since we're recursively calling my sort here on these like objects inside, we need some base case where by if we get to this case we break and and return. So um, I like the base case of um, an array with zero or one elements and returning just just returning that same array because um, an array with zero elements is sorted and an array with just one element is also sorted. So we can say like if um, this dot length is less than or equal to one, then we'll return uh, return this. Okay, so if we run this again, what are we gonna get? Okay, we're not actually exercising anything. Um, I, all right, I'm not sure if this is going to work the first time, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so we it actually did. So 1, 2, 3, 11, 34, 99. So now we have a function here called my sort, which um, is a method that we implemented, right? So we took in my sort, or we, we added my sort to the array prototype, which means that on instances of arrays, we can call this method. And because we're using this method style of uh, invoking the function where we have some object on the left and then a dot, and then we have like the parens on the right, um, this inside of the function, this will refer to the object that was on the left. So here, this is bound to the instance of the array that we defined at the top. Let's just move that down for clarity. Um, so ARR is uh, this array that we're working with. So this, this dot length, if this dot length is less than or equal to one, we return this. Um, if otherwise we're gonna split it in half, we're gonna merge the left, then we're gonna, or we're gonna sort the left and then we're gonna sort the right and we'll pass those two left and right into merge, which will merge the two together. And this is kind of the merge sort algorithm. So um, now let's extend our, our sort function to accept a function itself. So um, our my sort, right? So like this is the function that we defined right now or previously it didn't accept any arguments, but we're gonna add a single argument called fn. And fn is gonna be our comparator. So now my sort can take in um, a function. And so we need to define that function. So if we define it as, or if we just pass in this default compare, right? So default compare, we want this to sort it in like uh, alphabetical order. So default compare is going to be passed into our function here. We need to pass that down uh, when we're calling my sort recursively. And we also need to pass it down to merge. So we need to take our merge function and make this accept a function itself. And rather than just straight up comparing um, left the, the first item in the left array and the, in the first item in the right array, what we can do is we can pass the, the first item in the left array and then the first item in the right array as arguments to our function. And then if that is less than zero, then we can, um, we can do the same action. So rather than just straight up comparing is the, the first item in the left array less than the, the first item in the right array, we wanna use this function. So we're gonna call the function and pass in two elements. And then whatever the function defines as the, the direction that should be sorted, that's what will, um, what will be used. So now our function is being called here and it's being called function style. So we don't have access to the underlying array because when we call something function style, this gets bound to the window or to the global, the global scope, right? Um, and so we're passing in default compare. We expect to get back sort of uh, alphabetical order and we do, so that's cool. Um, and then if we passed in, you know, our number compare, we should get, uh, you know, numeric sort, good. Now, if we, if we pass in nothing, uh, maybe we should expect to get the alphabetic uh, sort, but it turns out that fn is not a function here. Um, so in order to make our my sort work the same way as the normal sort with some default, some reasonable default, then I might come up here and say like, if um, fn is undefined, 
then set fn equal to default compare. Okay, and then we'll run this same function and we get, so by default now it is still the, um, you know, alphabetically sorted. Um, and then if we change our my sort to now take in the number compare, then it will use that function when it's sorting. So uh, if we wanted to, we could say like number compare um, reverse or something. So maybe we want our my sort to take in like A and B, and then we could take our number compare and say return number compare of A and B, and then multiply that by minus one. So we're gonna get number compare is gonna give us uh, uh, some number, and then by my um, multiplying by negative one, we're gonna flip the sign, and we should get a uh, our array in reverse order. So this is how we would like get a you know. Um, a list of numbers in descending order. So, okay, that's uh, that's all I wanted to show. I'll drop in some links to gists with all of the code for uh, for this episode. Uh, hopefully, that was helpful. Uh, if you found this useful and uh, you'd like to see more videos like that, I would appreciate the 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 old subscribe. All right, friends, see ya.